A while ago, I created a video together with Freddie Brown from Mozilla about the Firefox sandbox and a particular sandbox escape idea or how you can research the Firefox sandbox. And he now sent me a link to this new uh, Google blog post, new details on commercial spyware. And uh, apparently it's a very similar bug. Obviously it's uh, by Google, so I assume it's Google Chrome, not Firefox, but I guess there are some similarities there. Uh, he mentioned that it's very similar to the video that I released. So a quick refresher, uh, this is the video. What is a, a browser security sandbox? And in this video, I basically just explored, let's, let's quickly step through there, how the Firefox browser is split up into multiple components. You can kind of imagine the websites are the content itself and the parent is like the actual Firefox uh, main process, so to say. That's so that when websites get compromised, it's much harder to actually, like if there's an actual exploit that can exploit Firefox, that uh, maybe only the renderer is exploited and you cannot actually access the underlying uh, operating system. And it explains in this video how the sandbox is implemented. And there's this uh, communication um, channel and inter-process communication between uh, the the main, um, yeah, the IPC layer, which is uh, basically connecting this renderer process with the regular browser. And we actually explore here uh, how this is done in Firefox and it's actually like actual JavaScript and HTML. So, so we look here into the browser um, uh, dev tools basically, but we are actually debugging, you can see here we are debugging the browser itself. So here all these HTML elements are actually the browser interface. So Firefox's interface is implemented with HTML as well. And as an example, when you send an alert, it actually causes an IPC mechanism to send uh, a message, a prompt open message to the uh, Firefox main process, the main thread, and it will, it will then allow to open a new uh, operating system window. This is just a basic introduction how you should, um, or how you can look into these IPC mechanisms and um, start maybe looking for bugs. Uh, Firefox um, also created a, a write-up, I believe. Yeah, here's the article. Let's have a quick look. So examining JavaScript interprocess communication in Firefox, Frederick uh, Brown uh, wrote this, detailing exactly how you can debug this and how it works in the hopes that researchers get motivated and start looking into this and maybe report bugs to Firefox. So you can see uh, Freddie put a lot of effort into writing this, hoping they would get bugs in return. Unfortunately, so far, we, we just uh, talked uh, the other day at a conference and he mentioned that apparently no bug uh, from you know me making this video and he writing this long article uh, you know has been over a year, um, has come out of this. However, today he wrote me a message saying, hey, look at this one here. Apparently, this is very similar to uh, what I described in this video. So let's, uh, it's a, uh, uh, okay, the article is not that long. So maybe we can quickly uh, read over this. And let's see how actually how close it is to the video that I um that I released back then. Uh, TIG has been tracking the activities of commercial spyware vendors for years using our research to improve the safety and security of Google products and share intelligence with our industry peers. Tax research underscores that a commercial surveillance industry is thriving and has expanded significantly, significantly in recent years, creating risks for internet users around the globe. Commercial spyware puts advanced surveillance capabilities in the hands of governments who use them to spy on journalists, human rights activists, political oppositions, and dissidents. Google and TAG are committed to disrupt these threats, protecting users and raising awareness and risk posed by the growing commercial spyware industry. Uh, continuing this work today, we are sharing the finding of an exploit framework with likely tries to with likely ties to Varistan IT, a company in Barcelona, Spain that claims to be a provider of custom security solutions. Yeah, interesting. Uh, so it's always interesting. You know, there are some 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 known exploit vendors or um, servers companies like, you know, NSO Group or, I don't know, there are a couple of them. But uh, it's always interesting, obviously, to read about one that I didn't know about. And it's also interesting, you know, if you go on their website, how much are they advertising their exploit kit? We can design custom security patches. This sounds like forensics, uh, training, secure protocols. It's all about embedded devices. Is that the correct Variston? I mean, it does say uh, uh, Spain, Barcelona down here. So, so it's kind of interesting. So uh, if they 
apparently offer this kind of exploit framework um, that, you know, their public website does kind of not say anything about that. It's, um, I mean, I, it would make sense. I mean, not every a company wants to, you know, the people who buy this, they know they offer this. Um, so it, they don't have to necessarily advertise it on, on their website, I guess. Okay, anyway. Their Helicona framework exploits NDA vulnerabilities in Chrome, Firefox, and Microsoft. That's why it's so important to always update your browsers. Is my browser up to date? Okay, I don't know how to check for updates. Google, Microsoft, and Firefox fixed the affected vulnerabilities in 2021 and early 22. While we have not detected active exploitation based on research below, it appears likely these were utilized as zero days in the wild. The Files package contained a fully documented Firefox exploit chain for Windows and Linux. For remote code execution, it exploits this one to use a free after use after free vulnerability that was reported in March 22 as being exploited in the wild. Tag assesses that uh, files package likely exploits the RCE vulnerability since at least 2019, well before the bug was publicly known and patched. The Alconica exploit is effective against Firefox. So suggestion it may have been used as, uh, used as early as December 2018. Uh, additionally, when Mozilla patched the vulnerability exploit code in their bug report, shares striking similarity with the Heliconia exploit, including the same variable names and markers. These overlaps suggest the exploit author is the same for both the Heliconia exploit and the same exploit code Mozilla shared when they patched the bug. The sandbox escape is specific to the Windows version of Firefox and was fixed without a CVE in September 2019. The vulnerability abused the fact that user-controlled CSS values can be rendered inside the privileged content process using the forms show dropdown IPC. The code execution is achieved by injecting XLB bindings to resolve Windows APIs and call WinExec. The exploit code spawns a new calculator and unlike the other Heliconia frameworks does not include a launcher capability or dummy agent. I For, for a moment I thought maybe my video came out uh, before uh, this, this bug. Um, and before the article, you know, it would have been kind of a funny story to say, you know, maybe my video didn't help to report legit bugs, but maybe helped um, exploit developers or something. But, uh, you know, this write-up is to, to 2021 and, uh, yeah, my video is also from 2021. So I guess it's more the other way around. You know, there were bugs like this reported and were exploited in the wild that prompted maybe Freddy to start uh, writing about how to research this area to and hoping that no other bugs um, or rather that more bugs get reported uh, in this area so they can't be used um, in exploits. And it's very similar, I guess. Uh, so uh, here they mention that it's an IPC forms show dropdown. And if we look here, how, for example, uh, an alert box is shown, we can see, for example, here, the prompt colon open uh, IPC message. So, you know, it's it's very similar uh, in that sense. So um, uh, let's see if we have any more details here. Uh, how does this work? Here you can also see Freddy on here. Are these the changes? Can I see like a diff view of this? So this is the patch apparently. Uh, so, so, so this is just me, you know, I'm not experienced at all in like exploitation stuff and Firefox and stuff. So I'm really just guessing here, just trying to do some educated guesses. It says here Chrome, not to be confused with the Chrome browser. Chrome in Firefox just refers to the interface. That's the how the UI is called, the shiny Chrome. But apparently this uh, this IPC uh, show dropdown, you can add um, CSS styling to it. No clue why, uh, of course, but probably there's a good reason why. And now they have, they restrict um, which CSS values are allowed. So I guess uh, parent helper. So before they had a for loop over the style in the property and then and then they just add these rules just straight adding them uh, and then insert this uh, rule as like CSS code. So here's the rule body with the uh, assembled um, CSS strings. 
but now um, they only loop over the supported property. So only they loop only over this and um, only if they find these settings, they get added and everything else will be ignored. Yeah, same here. They before just looped over everything. I assume style was just passed in, you know, from the IPC or something. Now it's just about over the support, the support properties. Okay, so that's the fix. It would have been cool to see the exploit code obviously itself. I don't, I don't know how, ah, maybe, okay, wait, wait, wait. Achieve X XLB bindings. Um, Ah, okay. That does give us some, I, I'm not familiar with XBL. Okay, so this is a XML based markup language. It was devised in Netscape. The primary use of XBL was in the Firefox web browser, but Mozilla deprecated it and completely removed it from Firefox in 2019. Ah, might, might that have been design review XBL removal? Let's see, when was it exactly removed? That's a funny graph. <laughs> How many lines of XBL code is still left uh, in the in the code? But bindings probably means that it like it, the code is still there. Oh, bindings of in content bindings. Not not sure what that exactly means, but maybe in content means that websites can still use it, and then bindings is just like where Firefox used it internally maybe or something, I don't know. Mozilla attempted to standardize into the, but due to lack of interest from other web browsers abandoned in 2012. The Shadow DOM specification acknowledges XBL as a strong influence. XUL, user interface language, defines a user interface layout of an application. CSS rules can be used to change the appearance, appearance of various XUL elements, but XBL is needed to alter the behavior of widgets such as scroll bar. Ah, so it's really like affecting. Um, mm, okay, okay, now I see why maybe this is interesting for exploitation. An XBL file contains bindings, uh, each of which describe the behavior of a XUL widget. The root element of an XBL file is in the bindings element, which contains one or more binding elements. Each binding element declares one binding, which can be attached to an XUL element. It may also possess an ID attribute. A binding is assigned to an element by setting the CSS property MOS binding to the URL of the bindings file. Okay, I wanna see such a binding now. I kind of feel like I, I, I get where this is going. Maybe we can find it in the draft. Okay, so this would be such an, a binding. You would bind like a nav and then you would have a handler with JavaScript. Okay, I feel like now I get this. So um, probably how the exploit worked is, okay, so apparently, they're ex so they exploited the renderer uh, and then they were able to send arbitrary IPC messages. So they had the renderer exploit and they would be able to execute code in uh, the renderer process. If we go to my video, so they compromised the website itself, but they still couldn't access um, the operating system. So what they have is basically high privileged JavaScript execution kind of that, that can do a lot, but more than a website can do, but not uh, much else other than communicate with the main Firefox process. And apparently there's an IPC called show dropdown, which would sh show the dropdown. Ah, I guess maybe may, uh, forms, forms show dropdown. So it's probably literally like an HTML dropdown. So when a website uses like an, like a dropdown element, something like this, like a dropdown, the website says, okay, here's a select element and then more privileged code, usually you as a website owner don't have access to it, but it, in the background it sends an IPC probably to the Firefox interface and says, okay, please, I wanna show here a dropdown menu. And this dropdown can also be styled, of course. Um, but uh, probably the how the rendering works and stuff like this is very limited what kind of styles you can use you know, based on the CSS you have in your code. That's also why styles are supported for this probably. It tells via IPC, can you please render me this drop down here uh, with these styles, please. But usually you, it's very restricted um, based on, you know, the HTML you can just write. But if you have direct access to the IPC because you compromise this renderer, you can send arbitrary styles. And I guess the part that is then rendering this 
dropdown is actually in the main thread. Uh, so it's rendered here in the left in the in the main thread, this dropdown. And they figured out that you can give it um, specific X XBL bindings. I guess if Firefox or Mozilla wanted to uh, have XBL as kind of like a standard for user interfaces, it makes sense that they are using or used at the time still internally XBL. That's why I guess this was even supported. So an attacker could send over malicious styles and one style would be a binding, which would look something like something like this. They would send over a MOS binding maybe with a URL, which would reference an XML file. And this XML file would look something like this. This would be an XML document. No, no, no that's wrong. Uh, more like binding ID, more like something like this, I guess, where you have like a binding defined and then implementation and, and the implementation is just raw JavaScript again. So now, you were able to escalate from injecting uh, CSS styles to actually executing um, JavaScript. I wonder if there is XSS with XBL, third party style sheet and XBL bindings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, see this is like back then when, uh, when the browser front end is still supported. Look, this is Firefox before two. They injected here a MOS binding uh, with, uh, I guess with a malicious um, uh, XBL URL or something. This is kind of like old school XSS. It didn't work anymore in the front end because you know this has been remedied a long time ago. But in the back end, like the main thread still supported this, I guess. So you know some old school XSS knowledge combined with being able to send IPCs, loading your binding, executing JavaScript, and now you have JavaScript execution in the main renderer, uh, in the in the main thread. And uh, if you have um, JavaScript execution in the main thread, you probably can basically do anything because now you are the main Firefox thread. So everything you can do like in your Firefox menu, if you go to like the preferences, like all of this is privileged code, right? Like how you can change, uh, I don't know, uh, like, I don't know, like the, your extensions and extensions can maybe access native uh, applications on the system. Like now, now with that JavaScript execution, you probably then have, you know, broke out of the sandbox, I guess that so that is like my summary guess um, of, of how this all worked. Um, and it's kind of cool to see like how s kind of like the details are explained in this video. So maybe uh, this is uh, interesting to you. So maybe watch this again. So I don't know. Uh, this was me trying to review uh, a document here. Hope you liked this. Cool.